I'm headed to Outdoorsman's, a sporty goods store in Phoenix, to track down a local expert. Cody? Steve? Good to meet you, man. Good to meet you. Cody Nelson, a manager at Outdoorsman's, has been hunting coos deer in the Sky Islands for decades. The guy is fanatic about these animals, and I mean that in the best possible way. So you drew the Galero tag. Yeah, so like a guy comes in off the street and says he drew that Unit 32 tag, what's the first thing that pops in your head? Rough country. Really? Absolutely. It's a... Uh, Just like topography? Well, yeah, I mean, you get everything from the desert floor to uh -huh. uh, maybe 7,500 feet. It's just a fantastic area, very remote, very rugged. So how would you describe like the main hunting strategy? Glass, glass, glass. Optics mounted on tripods. People think we're nuts, but I'll back away from a mountain, look at a much more, you know, large piece of country yeah. and find where those pockets of deer are and then move in on those canyons. And then try to it, relocate it, Absolutely. Because yeah. you know the deer are there. They, you know, they're just not going to get up and walk away forever. The thing of it is, is that coos deer, does will live, they can live their whole entire life within, you know, like a square mile. They won't, they, they, they have no reason to leave that. They're not as dependent on water as other animals are. Mm -hmm. The moisture they get is from, from the, uh, the, the plants that they eat. Yep. And then the bucks, their area that they will roam in gets a little bigger during the rut, but they're actually, their core, you know, home yep. is actually smaller than the does. Really? They'll live a real tight area. So when you find them generally in a spot, they'll generally be within that, you know, again, less than a square mile. So you can get up in a spot and look down and you look, you'd be looking at a deer's home range. Sure, absolutely. If you were at a certain, you know, distance and you were looking through one view of your binoculars and you had a series of two or three canyons and you see a buck in one of those canyons, there's a real good chance that he's not going to leave that general area yeah. until the rut comes off. So nothing like mule deer. Uh, no, mule deer are yeah. way more nomadic than, yeah, yeah. than, than, uh, than coos deer are. That's interesting, man. Yep. So how many miles might you cover in a day? Like, one, like let's say you walk in to get to your hunting area. If, so you walk three, four miles or whatever. If I'm in good country and I know there's, there's deer in the area, yeah. if I've walked a mile to get in and there's no one else and I don't feel the pressure and, and everything's good and I've seen deer and maybe, you know, I've seen some bucks, um, the, the deer that I killed a couple weeks ago, yeah. we sat in that area for six different glassing sessions and we killed that deer on the seventh session. Had you been seeing them around all the other times? Uh, um, no. We knew the deer was there and we, we just had to go with our gut feeling. Were you seeing other deer during We this? were seeing other does. Just hadn't seen a lot of bucks at all. Yeah. And uh, you just kind of had to stay out. You glassed it seven times. Seven. You got... We glassed seven different mornings and evenings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, until You're we found kidding. the deer. And then we, we put him to bed that night and went back into the same spot in the morning and we shot him at like 400 yards. I got to get you to come well, down. Well, and, we can do that. Well, I just want to teach you about the country. Yeah, just kind of be like, here's what you're looking for. Here's what you're not yeah. looking for. Yeah, we could do that. Oh, I can't wait, man. That's very nice of you to come down and help me figure Absolutely. stuff out. I got deer. See where that peak is? Yeah. There's kind of a tabletop right there. Yeah. If you take the lowest juniper just below the shelf, yeah. then come down open slope to the right. Oh, I got her. Got her. There's no one behind it. That right there is why optics on a tripod are important. That's a tough spot, man. Like everywhere you go, man, the guys that know how to hunt an area, you know, they just know like a million things, but, but they have like an accurate search image. You know, I mean, they know what the thing looks like specifically. But then also you get this kind of ingrained sense of like how that thing fits onto the landscape. Like a lot of times people ask me, how do I get into hunting? Like I really like to go hunting and, you know, kill a deer for myself to eat or kill, you know, whatever, kill an elk for my family to eat. And the thing that I always like tell them like beginner advice is if you want to shave years off the process, you like have to hang out with dudes who who hunt the area, you know, who are avid and know the area because they'll show you tricks that you'll never, not that you'll never learn, they'll show you tricks they'll take you forever to figure out. 